welcome to The Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement professional while having fun. I'm your host, Casey Marie Hertz, and today we're gonna to be playing on the reformer. So today we're gonna to be playing on the reformer for, uh, with the jump board for a much different reason than our typical classical jumping structure. Um, I do lots of reading and investigation on all different types of fitness, and I've been reading a lot about cellular fitness re recently. So what does that mean? Really, cellular fitness is about how well your body can exchange um, it, the cellular debris that needs to go out and detox and how much of the, the good nutrients your cells can take in. And what's really fascinating to me is no matter what your chronological age is, the age of your cells really are what make you either feel vital and buoyant or maybe a little bit older than you are. So we want to try to give our clients lots of different ways uh, that they can feel as young as they want to be and be able to do what they want to do. Now, inflammation is the name of the game these days when it comes to uh, how well your body works, what type of gene expression is happening on the inside. So anything that we can do to offset all of the, the toxins that we run into uh, on an everyday um, on an everyday basis and level is super, super important. It's not only for our clients, but for ourselves also. So I'm sure, you know, rebounding has been around for a while. It's those um, small mini trampolines that uh, you, uh, I'm sure you've seen lots of infomercials on, but they're really, really great for your body. They definitely exercise yourselves and help to increase uh, your lymphatic drainage, which is very important. It's your main detox center of the body, right? So your lymph system runs all the way through your body, much like your vascular system. But the biggest difference between the two is that your vascular system has a pump the heart. So that's what helps the blood go all the way to our extremities and back um, for proper circulation. Now the lymph system is, is what, it's that clear liquid that takes and cleans out the blood, um, getting rid of toxins. But this, the lymph system itself doesn't have a pump, right? There's two ways to get the lymph system to really start moving to detoxify the body. The first one is, well, you know, breathing and having a vascular system really helps because a lot of the lymph vessels abut the vascular system so it can ride off of the pump heartbeat. Now, the other thing that needs to happen for proper uh, lymph uh, clearing and lymph cleaning is movement. Movement absolutely aids in lymphatic drainage. Now, if you sit there and you think, okay, well I move, think about all the areas in your body that actually don't move even when you're walking. So this for our clients is anywhere that they hold resting tissue patterns, resting tissue tension, those areas in the body that don't respond to breath, the areas in the body that don't respond to movement, those little places where there's some, some micro trauma, fibroblasts holding on and in a 911 response, nothing's moving through there. So we want to clear the waterways of our body through really precise and targeted release work to open up these channels of tissue. And then we can do things like the rebounding I'm gonna show you on the reformer to help move and start to stimulate that detoxification process. So what I would wanna do with somebody before they start um, is just get some broad openings of the body. Like I said just now, release work. So I have this dough roller here that I can start to roll out the bottom of the foot because I'm absolutely going to be using this. I want that spring power of the joint structure of the feet, the ligamentous structure. We wanna get all of that to open up. And then I'm gonna get down onto the mat with my yoga block here. This is gonna help me. And I'm gonna roll out the calf here. Now this is an area, the lower legs, where a lot of people have 
edema or swelling. So what we're doing here is opening up that back channel of the calf to really start to open up where it can get very, very stagnant. If you think about it, the foot is very far away from the heart and that what makes the pumping action actually of the back of your calf really help to disperse the blood and lymph back up the body. Um, you can kind of think about your calf muscle as, as your second and third heart of your body. It really helps to bring it back up, but if your calves are tight, it makes it really difficult to get that liquid back up against the flow of gravity. Another place that's really important to open up also is the side of the calf. You go into this tissue, you probably don't wanna roll directly onto the front of this bone here, but out here is really good. Out by the fibula, you can even work some pointing and flexing just to get this tissue to open up. Very historically tight on many, many people because the hips are so tight. So this is a nice place to start to open up. Then from here, we're gonna get onto the reformer. I have a red and a blue spring on. That's a heavy and a light, and you will change this depending on the needs of your clients. So now that all of this tissue is opened up and warm, I'm gonna lay down onto the reformer. I have a nice pillow for myself to help me ground my T8 vertebra into neutral. And I'm also gonna take this nice little rolled up towel and slip it underneath my low back for some support. Now, I'm gonna go out to straight legs. Again, it's not that tense of, of spring tension here. It's kind of this like Goldilocks medium, just light uh, tissue. So first we can start with heel drops. And this is really nice because what we're doing is allowing this knocking on the door of the calcaneus to travel all the way to the crown of the head. You can always, in this particular section, do a little bit more of spring tension because your body can definitely handle it. Then from here, you can go into ball of the feet and toe taps, a little bit harder. You don't get that residual all the way up the body but it's a nice, again, place to start to get that nice up and down sensation of the legs. Once you're warmed up, then you can go into what I call flat foot jumping, where you just roll all the way to the heels and through the feet. Now, yes, this is work, trying to keep the torso on, but this is fabulous work to really get that nice, almost bone knocking of the body. You could do this for up to five to seven minutes. And trust me, you'd be surprised in how much of a workout it is, even for the cardiovascular system, to sit there and do those straight leg jumps for that amount of time. Now, you're not gonna be able to do that off the bat. You wanna start slow. You wanna make sure that you don't go out of your neutral spine and pelvis to do this, but really start to work up to a nice five minute segment where you can go into that jumping, letting all of the tissue surrounding your bones to relax as you get that nice feeling of fluidity through your whole body. Now again, start small, then work your way up to it and you can always play with the amount of tension that you have on the springs for you or your client. This question comes in from Anne via our forum. And her question is asking about neutral spine versus imprinted spine. And uh, the ways that you should use both or in which one is better for the health of the spine. So this can be a little bit of a complicated, uh, controversial question in the Pilates world. So I'll try to make it as um, simple as, as possible. So this, this kind of going back and forth between neutral spine and imprinted spine has been, you know, happening for many, many years in the Pilates world. And um, those, you know, classical, classically minded teachers really do stay true to the way that uh, Joseph Pilates really thought about the spine and the pelvis and, and what was 
um, current science, exercise science then. Um, Anne brought up like in Return to Life, Joseph Pilates' book about contrology, that he does outline, you know, very much so about that imprinted um, spine in the lower back. Um, and, you know, I definitely taught in the classical Pilates world for a while, um, as, as well as um, Jennifer. And so, you know, there are instances where using a little bit more of an imprint can be very, very helpful. But on the whole, what happened um, for myself in teaching and for a lot of the contemporary Pilates crowd is that although that was a great starting point for the repertoire, and it's really important to know that beautifully rich tradition that we all come from and to know why and how, that you know science does tread on um, and that we're learning more and more about the body every single second. Uh, oftentimes I, I think of this kind of rift as a, you know, if I was gonna go in and get surgery um, on any part of my body, I would want a doctor that had lots of years of experience and know a lot about the body for, for many, many years, but then also be very, very up to date on current protocols and different advancements in technology. Um, just think about how much more we know about the body since um, small cameras have come onto the scene thinking about like laparoscopic surgery and now what we can see how the tissue works just because we can insert tiny cameras into the body. We just know so much more. And what we're really learning about um, the human archetypal posture is that having a more neutral spine and pelvis really is, uh, does create the space for uh, better disc uh, health, better vertebral health, and also for, for our organ structure in our body, for our hydrostatic skeleton. And that really is the natural way that we can organize uh, to offset the pull of gravity every day. So us in the studio, we very much are of the, we want to try to get neutral spine and pelvis as soon as possible with our clients. Now, many people come in to our uh, studio with lots and lots of pain and a neutral spine and pelvis is actually a little bit too painful, but that doesn't mean I put them into an imprint. What that tells me is that there's so much tissue rigidity that's keeping them in a holding pattern that really they're not ready for movement-based re-education. They need to do release work first to start to crack that outer shell of armor that's keeping them in this pain body, in this pain alignment. Now, once we go through, and sometimes this takes weeks and months with some clients of steady release work with them doing it as homework, then we have pliability of tissue to get them into an easy neutral spine while supported. So that means, as you see in all of our videos, you know, the smart spine pillow to help them drop T8 a lot of pillowing of the lumbar spine so that their body can learn the curves of their spine again, which is really their birthright DNA-based alignment that's easy, that they can drop into and relax into. We don't wanna bring them into a neutral spine that causes more rigidity. We need to figure out how we can create an ease and placement there at that home base. Then from there, there's a lot of a technique and work to not strengthen it yet, but just to get people to organize in that way in lots of different planes of gravity with lots of different stimuli. Then once they master that, then we bring them into more strengthening exercises out of neutral, bringing them into ab curls, which is out of neutral, right, for the spine. And so that's when we can start to then maybe when we're very advanced, going into long lever challenges with things like hundreds where the legs are out long, you're not gonna be able to hold a neutral there. You're gonna have to be in a supported imprint where we still have toweling underneath the low back that you can tilt the pelvis into a little bit without pressing it into the mat. The action of pressing the low back into the mat really does do not only things to the pelvis and spine, but also to the hip joints. We have to remember that it's a whole continuum. And so even though we are maybe being a little bit more posterior than a true neutral, it's still into support 
to get the long lever support um, of the legs. But again, this is for a very advanced client. You're not going to put your clients that are just trying to get more mobility between their femur and their pelvis into these types of positions. It, it, it doesn't quite make sense on the on term of a learning curve for the body because really all of this beautiful acrobatic advanced repertoire is simply that. It's, it's fun. It's gymnastics for people that can assimilate easily. But for your clients that are beginner and just coming in, they really need a lot of just kind of like homeostatic uh, re-education. And um, that neutral bony alignment is crucial because that helps to turn on our core body easier. Um, so that's how we look at things. Um, but that being said, everybody is different. Every teacher has a different way of looking at the body. Every teacher has a different approach. You know, different strokes, different folks. Everyone has their way of doing it. This is just our approach of, of how to help people into an easier, pain-free body. That's all for today. And if you have any observations or questions, you can comment below on Facebook, Twitter, or our forum. Thanks so much for watching and never stop learning.